Hello everyone, I am Sherlock, and today we're going together on a journey learning how to shoutcast. If you're watching this video, you already know the importance of a shoutcaster in League of Legends, uh, and this series of videos is going to be mostly tailored for League of Legends, but don't worry though, if you're watching this and want to cast another league, most of the skills that we're going to be going through in this uh, series of video are going to be exportable on the game of your choice as long as you just refine and manipulate these skills to adapt to, to the game you cast. So with that being said, let's dive into it. Zerso just in the right position to feed Senkuk some Skittles, but he's dodged two, he's dodged three, Senkuk gets hit with one, dodges Dance. the next one, Senkuk, you're too good! Senkuk, oh, oh my god, Senkuk! Holy hell! Nexus turret will fall, another will fall, 42 minutes, and I never doubted them! I never doubted them! Bang is hiding, he's coming! Bang looking to come in, here comes your initiation, they're right through! Oh my god! Dr. Shockwave will find them all! And SKT, with a hell of a response, will take down... So, people often struggle when getting into shout casting, they wonder, how do I become a good caster? But the thing is, in order to answer that question, we need to actually ask ourselves another one, which is, what is a good cast? And that question raises a third and final one, what is a cast? And so, because this is a very broad question, we need a broad answer. A shout caster, and by extension a cast, has many goals. Um, the hats that a shout caster can wear are, and not limited to, a storyteller, an entertainer, a supporter, an analyst, a critic, and even sometimes a celebrity, like a caster can steal the spotlight from the games uh, themselves onto themselves for, uh, on, on some occasions. But the goal of a shout caster is always going to be to make sure that the audience enjoys watching the game or the match that they are broadcasting. And it's always, always, always going to be to magnify and amplify the viewer's experience. This is the very first resource that the shoutcaster is working with. If you ever had that feeling when watching an esports match of being at the edges of your seat and ready to scream at the top of your lungs, because if your favorite team wins that final team fight, then they're probably going to take away the game. Well, chances are that you had the stream sound up at that moment, and the shoutcasters were playing a big part in the emotional investment you had into the game's result. A shoutcaster, as I said before, is here to amplify your emotions, and that of every spectator, regardless of what team they root for. Well, that this objective might appear conflicting though, as you have to magnify both the, the, winning, the joy of the winning team's uh, supporters and the sadness of the losing team's fans, but it will actually be done through clever manipulation of your voice, uh, your, of your voice's energy level and the stakes that you bring up before that penultimate moment. So, you have to consider a caster's shout casting as a vessel in which the viewers will just um, project any of their emotion, regardless of what team they root for. So now let's get like these are these are very broad concepts. Let's get a bit more technical. Casting can put a great strain on your voice, so you don't want to be alone having to shout for up to 50 minutes straight. Instead, we're working most of the time as a duo, uh, sometimes even as a trio. In order to achieve all of these complex tasks done before, uh, that, that I've mentioned before, we are going to be needing to split uh, the casters into two distinct roles and give each of them some different missions that they can focus on and work together to create a great viewing experience. Let me now introduce to you the true roles that we're, we're going to be talking about in most of these series. Uh, I'm talking, of course, about the play-by-play -play caster, who is also known as the PvP caster, and the color caster, which can shorten to CC. Um, a PvP is a show person. They're here for the action, they're here for the blood, they thrive in messy teamfights, bloody skirmishes, and heated 1v1 knife fights. A PvP will need to manipulate his voice to match the energy of the play happening on the screen to help the viewer feel invested in the play, in the game. A PvP will typically play on the tension of an in-game situation by increasing the speed of their speech so that the volume of their voice 
uh, matches what's going on and can build some tension which he can let blow up afterwards as the play solves. Uh, they will also be playing on the volume of their voice, tweak the pitch and the tone of their voice to create a good casting call, and we'll see all of the technical details of that in specific videos later on. The call caster and the other half is the complementing part of the cast. They possess analytical skills and use their knowledge of the game to enhance the viewer's experience differently. So you see, whereas the PvP is more in the uh, classic football supporter style, like screaming, Whoa, my god! The color caster is going to be breaking down the complexity of the game at a professional level um, to, uh, to reveal all of the hidden subtleties to the, viewer, uh, to, to the viewers. So the CC is just here to make sure that every interesting and creating moves that the pros do in-game on the screen do not go unnoticed. The CC has to break down the match into simpler states for the viewer to understand by not only analyzing what's going on, but also helping to predict how the current game states will now unfold. A CC is here to also help predict what's going to be coming in the next few minutes so that the viewer can make sense out of it once it comes up, or the viewer can also feel surprised that it doesn't happen if, say, there's a big twist that, uh, that comes through in the games afterwards. So, by providing viewers with expectations, the CC allows the player, the, the spectators to be surprised, disappointed, frustrated, and have other emo uh, emotions associ associated with sportship. These two casters have very different missions, but they still need to cooperate to fulfill all of them to create a very good product on screen. They have to work hand in hand to share their time talking about the points they want to highlight during a game's limited time. Because the PvP has to create hype, the CC has to break down the uh, breakdown place so or drop some energy. It's going to be a it, it's going to be a, an intricate valse between the two casters to create the final product. So now that we answered uh, some of the questions from the start of the video, such as what is cast and what is good caster, let's go on to the next one. What? How do I get better at sharp casting? How do I learn sharp casting? Well. On that topic, uh, we're actually going to be building a work ethic throughout these vi these videos that you guys can be uh, using to better to to optimize basically the, your your learning of shout casting. So let's get right into this. Uh, we're going to be using Bloom's taxonomy to identify six steps of the learning process and apply them step by step to our casting shout casting journey. The first one of these steps is going to be remembering. It is explicit, it's mostly learning your written lessons, notes, basically basic ability to gain knowledge, receive information, and retain that knowledge. Essentially, if you're doing the, if you're watching this video and not forgetting everything that I'm talking about uh, the moment this video ends, I would say you're doing a great job at that first step, so congrats. <laughs> the second step is gonna be understanding. All of the definitions that you learned in this lecture carry some meaning. And you need to comprehend how these different concepts interact with each other and how they operate. And well, this is mostly done by looking at examples of the skills being executed. Uh, generally speaking, when you want to understand something, you just watch someone doing it. So in order to understand how PvP's cast action phases or how CCs set up stakes for the game to come, I heavily suggest to actively watch games from professional casts like LEC, LCK, LPL. Uh, LCS are also a great example of that, and just focus on different casters, different regions, and just only pay attention to the way that casters hand over the microphone, uh, when and why do they do it, when and why do they bring certain points, and how they behave when action is about to happen, or like, how do they behave after action has happened, uh, and pay attention to how they do things and why. This way you're going to be able to draw relationships between the different concepts and arbitrary and abstract blocks that we've defined in this lecture. So now that you understand, let's go to step three, apply. Practice, and most importantly repetition, is the mother of learning. You can't expect to become good at something without it. <coughs> However, mindlessly doing a task over and over without an active process to try and get better is really not going to achieve anything. Actually, you're going to spend a lot of time doing the same mistakes over and over again and not really spending your time efficiently. So, 
before we go blindly into just do it, uh, what we want to do is actually sell up some goals and pick up a skill, any skill, doesn't matter, all of them are good, and practice that skill. So, for example, your PvP, your interest into PvP, let's practice speed a little bit. Okay, let's do some practice casts. You go into a cast and you say, right now I'm going to be working on speed, and every time an action happens, you treat it with just speed and speed alone, and you try to vary the amount of speed, you try to uh, speed up long before the action, you try to speed up just right before the action. Try to, uh, try to have some variation in the way you do things, and in the way you cover action. Um, by having a goal and focusing on bettering it, designing drills and exercise to improve it and repeat, uh, the, re repeat it slightly differently every time, uh, you're going to see how that skill works and you're going to be able to assess it and appropriate it. So there's going to be later videos that will be solely focused on training methods and, uh, and, and drills later on, so don't worry about that. Now that you've been able to practice, understand what you're doing, it's time to refine skills. So step four is going to be the analysis. Analysis is basically the ability to disassemble an application of the skill into components and clearly identify each of the fundamental building blocks of that component and tools that were used to make it. Um, in our case, the skill is going to be shout casting, so the application is a teamfight caster call, for example. And then the components are the engage, the climax at the end of the team fight, the fundamental building blocks and tools that we mentioned before, as uh, speed, volume, uh, energy level, tension, pitch, tone, these sort of things. And we'll go into more specific details later. But basically, what you want to do once you start applying things is to take other examples from other people and see how do they do things, how do they do differently than you, what are the differences, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages. And next up is going to be the fifth step to the learning process, which is evaluation. This one is closely related to the previous one, analysis, because once you break down how other casters do differently, and the way that they go about casting, or the way they go about doing something, now you can add a judgment on, on top of that. So if you see, for example, Captain Flowers uh, casting a move, then you're going to notice that he heavily relies on speed. Is that good? Is that bad? How does he do it? Why does he do it? When does he use his speed? When, when does he actually default to volume instead? So all of these are going to be uh, giving you the answers that you need in order to learn properly. And once you are able to practice, analyze, evaluate, what is there left to master the skill? Well, the last step is going to be creating. Basically, once you master everything, you, you're able to analyze the blocks, the application of the skill. The last step for you to become the, the good, competent caster is going to be create your own style. Well, basically, you, we're going to take everything that we've seen in this series of videos and we're going to put it in a different way, which is going to be yours only. As a conclusion, um, I think the takeaway for all this video is going to be whether you're mo more interested in learning how to become a PvP or whether you're more interested in, to, in how to become a CC. And the other takeaway is going to be how to structure and how to train in order to become a shoutcaster. If you like this video and want to see the rest of this video series, I heavily suggest to you guys that you click the subscribe button, ring the bell, and tune in for the next videos. In the meantime, I am Sherlock. See you guys later.